Hey everyone, we know how hard it can be to keep up with the latest news in Israel, so if you haven't had the time to stay on top of what's what in the Holy Land, have no worries. I'm Natasha Kirchuk, and this is ILTV's Weekly Review. All right, now in spite of nationwide lockdowns, a small barbecue and charcoal is still filling the air here in Israel as the 72nd Independence Day has just come to an end. And all over the country, citizens have been celebrating from home. But while most Yomat's most holiday traditions have been canceled amidst the coronavirus pandemic, many others have simply been modified. ILTV's Aaron Porras has the story. A mobile DJ float could be heard driving through the city of Haifa, allowing people to party together but separately from their balconies. And the annual official torch lighting ceremony had been pre-recorded and held without an audience. And the military flyovers across the country had been limited to just four stunt planes, which flew over hospitals in a salute to Israel's medical professionals. Still, not everyone was respecting the rules for social distancing. Police have handed out nearly 1,400 fines for violations of the curfew or anti-gathering directives. But meanwhile, the general lockdown for the holiday had been lifted by 8 p.m. Wednesday, allowing grocery stores and select other businesses to open. And now more directives are being lifted. Starting today, most stores will be allowed to reopen, with the exception of closed malls, restaurants, and entertainment or leisure venues. Also, schools, open-air markets, guest houses, and select hotels have been given tentative approval to reopen as soon as next week. In spite of the eased restrictions following the holiday, however, Israelis are still urged to follow social distancing and mask-wearing rules. <laughs> Meanwhile, other directives still in place also include the 100-meter limit on leaving home, and group exercise is still banned. The 500-meter limit on leaving home to exercise has been lifted completely, though, and then playgrounds and public parks or beaches are still closed to anyone who doesn't live within 100 meters of these locations. And religious events must also continue to be held outside and in small numbers. נשים את הזום בצד, ניפגש כולנו יחד, ונחבק איש את רעיון. ועד אז, אזרחי ישראל, שמרו על עצמכם. הניפו דגל ביום העצמאות, שמחו במדינה שלנו. Even though Israelis are on lockdown this Independence Day, ILTV's Nitney Manson decided to hit the streets of Tel Aviv to see what locals are celebrating this year. And it's pretty intriguing. Check this out. Greatest achievement you think Israel has made in the last year? The way we handled Corona? Uh, fighting against the coronavirus. They managed to have government, so finally. <laughs> what is the thing that makes you the most proud to be Israeli? And the community, the the warm. We we are so warm to each other. We are like a big family because we have a very small country. Most of people here are warm. Everyone's nice. The Israeli culture, I think, that uh, when you go abroad to like another country and you see another Israeli, then there's a lot of uh, warmth and um, like we help each other. The unity in Israel, we all uh, uh, love each other and they support each other, especially when there is uh, troubles and uh, chaos. The way the Israeli people uh, care for each other is something to be proud of. Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> if you have one wish for Israel for the next year, to be in peace with all the world. We should learn to accept uh, people from different areas, like the Orthodox and the non-religious people should accept each other more. Try to be less uh, racist sometimes. <laughs> yeah, cool. I hope that they'll be able to have a parade and the corona will be over. <laughs> Amazing, me too. <laughs> what about you? Same. Peace and happiness. That's it. מגיע יום העצמאות, אני מרגיש הכי ישראלי שיכול להיות. אני אוהב את המדינה שלי, ואני אוהב לחיות במדינה שלי, וכיף לי במדינה הזאת. ואני אוהב גם את הישראלים, ואותכם אני אוהב מאוד מאוד. What's your favorite thing about being Israeli? And what about your biggest hope for Israel? All right, now the coronavirus pandemic will eventually end, but the world as we know it has already changed enormously. Well, one Israeli startup called Sonarax is getting ready for our new future with touch-free tech. ILTV's Nittany Manson has the details. 
Slowly but surely, the coronavirus crisis is winding down, but newly developed concerns and changes in our routine will remain. With the risks of spreading disease still fresh in our memories, millions of people will likely continue avoiding commonly touched surfaces like elevator buttons, doorknobs, and faucet handles. So the demand for touch-free technology has never been higher. An Israeli startup Sonorax is prepared. The company develops ready-to-install ultrasonic data transmission technology. And for those of us who don't speak fluent engineer, that means machine-to-machine -machine communications between any device that has a speaker and a microphone, because the tech uses sound waves to transfer data. So with Sonorax's technology installed on both devices, all you'll need is your smartphone. And then you just hold the phone near a controlled device and the audio signals complete the transaction, whether it's punching into a time clock at work, summoning an elevator, or even speaking through an intercom. And best of all, the sound wave is far above that which humans, and even dogs, can hear. I cannot wait to see that tech in action. All right. Now, the German government has just outlawed all activities by the Iranian-backed Lebanese terror group Hezbollah. This is a dramatic departure from Berlin's previous policy, which was based on the European Union's stance. The EU has only deemed Hezbollah's military wing as a terrorist entity and views its political branch as legitimate. But Germany's new ban does not differentiate between the group's military and political wings whatsoever. Im Zusammenhang mit dem Betätigungsverbot der Hisbala durchsuchen wir aktuell hier in Berlin und Köln vier Objekte. Es geht darum festzustellen, ob es einen Zusammenhang zwischen diesen Objekten und der Hisbala gibt, also der verbotenen Vereinigung. German police have raided four groups associated with Hezbollah in various locations across the country this morning. There is no formal German branch of Hezbollah, which is why Berlin can't outlaw the organization as such. Instead, the government is now prohibiting the group from displaying symbols, organizing and participating in assemblies, and is also confiscating Hezbollah's assets. Israel is, of course, welcoming Berlin's new policy. Hezbollah denies Israel's right to exist and threatens the country with violence and terror. And Germany estimates that around 1,050 people living in its nation are affiliated with the organization. Well, the German government claims Hezbollah uses Germany as a safe haven and a base for recruiting new supporters for attack and fundraising activities. And lawmakers have been long working on a ban of the group. Germany now joins the ranks of the U.S., the U.K., the Netherlands, and several Arab states, which already recognize Hezbollah as a terrorist entity. Well, Israelis across the country have spent the day commemorating the nation's fallen soldiers and terror victims, but this year's Israeli Israeli Memorial Day is nothing like what Israel is used to as the country fights off the coronavirus pandemic. Every year, Memorial Day begins with a minute-long air raid siren, and Israelis bow their heads in silence across the country to mark the start of the Remembrance Day. And typically, Israel's official Memorial Day ceremony is held at the Western Wall in Jerusalem's Old City. But this year, there's no audience, so the bizarre circumstances have made for some shocking imagery, with soldiers wearing protective masks as they stand at least two meters away from one another in the empty plaza. And Israeli President Uvn Rivlin is clearly disturbed by the situation. <laughs> בחלקות הצבאיות. איננו יכולים לחבק אתכם, לאמץ אתכם לליבנו. Now, today, police are being deployed in force to block public access to military cemeteries. Bereaved families are also being advised to stay at home this Memorial Day to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. And even Israel's Mount Herzl Military Cemetery is blocked off. It's, it's sad. It's amazingly sad to see the mountain empty. It's so beautiful here, all the gardening, it, it's amazing. Usually there are thousands of people going and going, and you go with the flow of people. And, and today you come and you hear the birds, almost nobody's here. Officials say that police will not physically restrain those who try to reach cemeteries, but will continue to urge them not to do so. Some have opted for visiting their loved ones prior to Memorial Day itself to avoid any controversy. <laughs> באנו לכאן להתייחד איתך. 
באנו לכאן להיות איתך. הקדמנו ביומיים. Small Israeli flags, each with a black ribbon, have been placed by IDF soldiers on every military grave in the country. And today at 11 a.m., a second two-minute-long siren was held prior to the main memorial ceremony at the Mount Herzl Military Cemetery in Jerusalem, which has concluded with a brief flyover by IAF jets. Since last Memorial Day, 42 soldiers and civilians have been killed, and the number of Israeli casualties of war stands at 23,816, according to the Defense Ministry. The figures include all soldiers and police who died during their service over the past year, including as a result of suicide, illness, or accident. Well, even though Memorial Day should be one in which we try to learn from destruction, this afternoon has seen yet another terror attack in the state of Israel. A 62-year-old Israeli woman has been stabbed in the central Israeli town of Kfal Saba. According to police, a Palestinian teenager from the West Bank attacked the woman outside the G-Mall. And the 19-year-old suspect, believed to be from the Palestinian city of Tulkarem, was shot down by an armed civilian who happened to be driving by. As for the victim, she's in moderate to serious condition after receiving treatment on the ground and before being taken to Kfal Saba's Mayo Medical Center. Officers are now investigating the stabbing and are trying to figure out how the teen attacker entered Israel from the West Bank. Now, amidst the coronavirus craziness, there is something good happening. It seems that the deadly novel virus is bringing people together in Israel, Figur figuratively, of course. A new poll has just been released, revealing that Israelis feel a higher sense of belonging to the state of Israel than ever before. Do you feel like you're an integral part of your country and share a common destiny with other locals? Here in Israel, the answer to that question is almost a resounding yes. 90% of Israelis say they feel a higher sense of belonging to their country. It's the highest figure recorded in a decade in the annual survey by the Israel Democracy Institute. The figures increased from last year among all of Israel's subpopulations, from the ultra-Orthodox Jews to the Arab Israelis. And of the Jewish Israelis surveyed, 92.5% say they feel like an integral part of the state. And 77% of Arab Israelis say the same. To put that change into perspective, just last year, only 45% of Arab Israeli respondents said that they feel like they're an integral part of the state. The survey has also found that more than 63% of the population believes that Israel has generally had more successes than failures since its establishment. Now, these are super, super interesting results, especially when you think about how politically divided Israel has been for the last year and a half with three back-to-back -back elections. Uh, but it is clear that coronavirus has changed the public perception. I'm actually interested to see uh, what next year's numbers look like. So how is the Israeli government deciding when it's right to roll back these restrictions? Well, the health ministry has just set new parameters on how to decide whether or not to ease or tighten restrictions amidst the coronavirus crisis. And ILTV's Aaron Porras has the details. Despite regulations being rolled back as of last night, the government says that restrictions will be increased if Israel begins to see over 300 new sick people per day, over 300 seriously ill patients, or the doubling of the national number of sick every 10 days or less. Right now, only around 200 to 300 Israelis have been diagnosed with COVID-19 in recent days. Only 130 are in serious condition, and cases are doubling around every 20 days, which is a good sign. Up north, police are beginning to take down checkpoints at the entrances of Arab towns like Deir al-Assad and Be'ina, which have been on lockdown for the last seven days due to their own outbreaks. As of Friday, Deir al-Assad had the highest infection rate of any community in Israel, despite only having 5,000 residents. While these two towns are no longer restricted zones, they will continue to be subject to nighttime curfews throughout the whole holy month of Ramadan. But as of 6 a.m. this morning, several mainly ultra-Orthodox towns in Beit Shemesh and Netivot have gone into lockdown again because of the spike in coronavirus infections in these areas in recent days. All right, now I don't know about you guys, but I've been pretty worried about when I'm going to be able to visit my family that lives abroad or even just when I'm going to be able to go on vacation. And that's why I'm very excited to share this good news. It looks like the U.S. airline Delta and the budget carrier Wizz Air are planning to resume flights to Israel early next month, and it seems that global travel as a whole will start ramping back up. Delta Airlines says it's booking flights between New York and Tel Aviv starting on May 10th, 
And on May 3rd, the Hungarian airline Wizz Air will be resuming service between Tel Aviv and London as a part of a larger plan to begin flying across the continent. Initially, flights will run three times a week. A Vienna-Tel Aviv route is also going to hit the air on May 17th. And international air travel across the world has gone down by a whopping 80 percent. The International Air Transport Association says that the sector will lose an estimated $300 billion as a result of the coronavirus crisis. Here in Israel, air travel Travel has almost completely shut down with just a handful of weekly flights, including a daily route to Newark, New Jersey by United Airlines. And Ben Gulion Airport says they've gone from dealing with about 5,000 passengers an hour to 5,000 passengers a month. But if you're planning on coming to Israel, keep this in mind. Foreign tourists are still banned entry into the country. Plus, all Israeli citizens and residents arriving in Israel from overseas are required to be housed in a state-run quarantine hotel upon entry for at least 14 days. So these days, the need to disinfect or sterilize every surface might feel like an obsession, but let's face it, it's pretty tough to use all those expensive store-bought cleaners or bleach and other harsh chemicals. Thankfully, though, a new solution is on its way from here in Israel, and ILTV's Nittany Manson has the details. An incredible new disinfectant is now being produced in Israeli labs and it'll forever change the way we clean our world. And while you may think I'm being melodramatic, believe me, it's true. This novel cleaner will be cheaper, easier to produce, and safe for the environment. And it's still every bit as good, if not better, at killing bacteria as other products. In fact, in recent tests, it's been shown to be effective against the coronavirus too. Developed by chemists at bar -Ilan University in Ramat Gan, this patented disinfectant mixes tap water with nanometer-shaped electrodes, creating an effective compound that works against bacteria, viruses, and spores. And because it's based on water, it's safe to touch skin. It does not contaminate the groundwater, and it can be used in more applications, such as sterilizing beds, bathrooms, and electronic devices. It can even be sprayed on fresh food to remove pesticides. But maybe best of all is its compact design. Through a partnership with Israeli startup Aqua Solutions, a commercial and portable version of the disinfectant is in development, and researchers explain that when it's finished, all you'll have to do is take out the compact spray bottle device, fill it with the nearest tap water, and spray. All right, now imagine being able to walk and work in the same place that your ancestors once thrived thousands of years ago. Well, that's exactly what one winemaker in the Sumerian Hills is doing. Check this out. This is one of the most ancient wine territories on the planet. No, I'm not in France, I'm not in Spain, and I'm not even in Italy. I'm in the Sumerian hills of Judea and Samaria. Welcome to Shiloh, the biblical city that preceded Jerusalem as the central worship site of the early Israelites. Over 3,000 years ago, Shiloh was the first capital of the Israelite kingdom. And today it's home to the Shiloh Winery, a boutique winery that produces some of Israel's most internationally recognized kosher wines. This is Amichai Luria, and he's the chief winemaker at Shiloh. This is a Merlot, Petit Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc. The whole area, all these vineyards around us, we have lots and lots of ancient wine presses that date back thousands of years. King David, Yoshua Binun, this is where they walked, this is where they lived, this is where they made wine. They'd bring the grapes here, step on it, put it into the hole over there, it would ferment, mm -hmm. and you'd have wine. When King David said, wine gladdens the heart, he was talking about wine that was made here in this area. After 2,000 years in exile, finally we're back to where everything started. And then there is light. Wow. You can see how deep we are underground if you just look up at the ceiling here. It's amazing. So we're drinking a Shiloh 2019 rosé in a cave where they used to age wine 3,000 3, years ago. Mechaim. Mechaim. In the Sumerian hills, you have cold nights, you have warm days, and what does that do for the grapes? 
the grapes mature slowly. And the slower they mature, the better they get. We actually collect all the waste from the chickens, from the uh, goats, from the sheep, and we use everything to make our own organic compost. So this is a Cabernet Sauvignon that I separated the men from the boys, so to speak, different barrels, right. and picked the best ones to make this specific wine. Okay. And this is the base of the Cabernet Secret Reserve, which is our best seller. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't serve this to the public yet. It's not ready. No, no. It, least, it needs at least another year in barrels. And also during that year, I'm going to be deciding which barrels will oh, continue. Oh, I love this. I feel like I'm ready yeah. to take this home. Amichai has taken me to his house to feast on a local lamb. So the one thing that you have to be careful about if you come to the Shiloh winery is how much you drink, right? How much you drink and how yeah. much you eat. And how much you eat. We try to do a different kind of tour mm -hmm. uh, to be unique, to give a different kind of experience. How long has this been cooking for? I don't know. I think I left to the vineyards at around 5 o'clock in the morning, so it's since 5 already in the no grill. No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. Sometimes it'll be longer. We'll see how that falls off through the bone. Oh, my God. It's an amazing privilege to work the land of Israel. It's an amazing privilege to plant the vine and knowing that prophecies are coming true. And when you respect the vines themselves, then you get back. It's a spiritual connection of a person that makes wine to the land itself, to the vines. I can't tell you what an incredible experience it was to visit Shiloh Winery. Amichai is such a special person and his wine is just absolutely incredible. He actually offers personalized tours where you can even get treated to one of his superb meals if you're lucky. But until flights are open back to Israel, if you'd like the chance to get your very own taste of Shiloh's magic, go to www.shilohwinery.com and order straight to your doorstep. That's it for ILTV's weekly review. See you next week.